here long. Place. Miss Liberty Diner in a small town in Liberty's Corners. The time? A little while ago. Or a little time from now. Well, around about now. Characters. Kevin McNeary, retired fire captain. Good natured love. Jack Durgan, Kevin's oldest friend and brother in law. Stella Giorgio, owner and operator of Miss Liberty. Tariq D, brilliant engineer working as a cook for Miss Liberty. Melody Prescott, the town volunteer, always up for helping. And Carl Fidler, a newcomer. Act one, a prologue. Kevin, a thickly built man, late middle age, is seated on a low bench. I'm sorry, Donna. I didn't mean to stay out so late. You can understand. The boys wanted to show me a good time. It's not every day a guy retires as chief. I only wanted a couple of shots, I promise you. And you know, a couple of beers to wash down those. But I swear, that was it. Oh, I wish you could have been there. On second thought, no, I'm glad you weren't there. Because they really... Would you want to see a bunch of middle-aged firefighters in women's bathing suits putting on some kind of beauty pageant? Yeah, they did the sketch. It was... Uh, you had to be there. Actually, you had to have been there for 30 years because they dredged up some really old... Did I ever tell you about my first chief back when I joined? Herb Fergal? Herb used to do this thing and Davey can intimidate perfectly. You know, he scratched his head. You know, I really can't do it. Not like Davey does. Well, it was no place for a lady like you. Come on, Kev. We're uh, going over to Stella's. Yep, yeah, tomorrow's a big day. No more job, no more fries, no more hanging at the station with the guys. I'm sure you'll be welcome. Oh, I've seen the old Dukefers coming around and they were no more welcome than I would be. Uh, no, Donna, honey. It's going to be another new chapter, just like you took me through. More change. Oh, boy. <laughs> Jack, uh, why does that stuff have to change? Because stuff gets old. Come on. Scene one. The Miss Liberty Diner is the one of the four buildings clustered near the four-way crossing called Liberty's Corner, which compromises the town and the others being House's Grocery, which houses the post office in the Eastern Annex, the Grange Hall, and the minicule bank branch, which the local farmers depend on to get them through planting. Miss Liberty takes its name seriously, or did when it opened a few decades back, and is liberally decorated with replica statue liberties of all sizes, American flags, bunting, pictures of fireworks and founding fathers. This is not a railroad diner, but the kind of country diner that doesn't have a counter or booths, just wooden tables and chairs, a red gingham tablecloths. This is a narrow pass-through between the diner and the kitchen, so we always get fleeting views of the cook. The cook has gone home by now because it's 12.30 a.m., and Stella, the owner, should have gone home hours ago, but she is topping up Kevin's mug with coffee. That's cup two, and you're not getting into your cars and driving until you've had a third. Stella, I just retired. You want to poison me already? The worst remake of Lethal Weapon ever. Old Smoke Eater is killed on his first day of retirement by a crazy firebug disguised as cranky old waitress. I might be cranky, but I'm no waitress. I take it the party was a success? Yeah. If your definition of success includes five volunteer firemen doing the French can-can, four fits of Jameson, and three IOUs from Walter Barber, who has never learned not to try and fill it inside straight, it was a barn burner, you'll excuse the expression. To Walter Barber, may I live long enough for him to make good. So what are you going to do tomorrow, Chief, besides sleep all day? 
Uh, just because I'm retired, I have no intention of wasting my time. I'll have you know, my schedule is all filled up. The brewers are playing the Cubs. Oh, so did you hear uh, Mike Jaswinski is also retiring and moving to Florida? His married daughter lives there. He can take his granddaughter to see Cinderella every week. You know, Kevin, it's nice how you remember things about people. This town is so small, that's not much to remember. Yeah, it's the kind of skill a good politician has. What are you getting at, Jack? Oh, Mike's retirement leaves the office of mayor open for election this November. You think Kevin should run for mayor? Why would I be mayor of Liberty's Corner? It's a part-time salary for a full-time tight pain in the neck. We're in trouble. We're in serious trouble. So why don't you run for mayor? Nobody likes me. I mean, apart from the obvious. Everybody likes Kevin. He's the guy that, that saved your house, uh, rescued your kitten, or, or raised money for the kids' baseball team. I'm telling you, Kevin is the only guy who can save this town from dying. Oh, you're exaggerating. It's true. The state has a commission to look at all the small towns and see which ones they can afford to keep. Afford to keep a town? And they're looking into whether our kids uh, couldn't go over to, to school over to Emerson Consolidated. Or how many people get on or off the train at the junction? Do we really need our own post office, or our own police station, our own fire station? Uh, you're just trying to get me worked up. Do the math, Kevin. Our population is dwindling every year. Our youngsters go off to college or a text school and they never come back. The farms are getting bought up by the big multinationals and they being run by robots. This town is in danger of disappearing completely. That couldn't possibly happen. Place called Cedar Mills. What? Cedar Mills over to Walton County. When they closed Valley Hospital, the staff all went somewhere else to work. The stores felt it first, then the schools, then the churches. Not enough people to keep it going. The town was unincorporated, and the only thing left was two old tumble-down bungalows occupied by a lady named Ethel Wallace and her daughter Clementine along the railroad siding where the depot used to be. I read it in the Bugle, which has lost 80% of its advertising, by the way. Uh, Bob Norris says he's using his wife Wife's inheritance to keep it open. The point is we can't go on doing nothing. We could try. This town is just fine the way it is. And there's no sense in making a whole lot of changes just for the sake of change. It's a nice place made up of kind people. We don't bother with politics. We teach our kids to say please and thank you. And we salute the flag. Yes, but the point is we can't just not do... Well, you know, on 4th of July the parade is only one block long. But we've had one every year for the past 87 years without a break, not even in wartime. We may not have beautiful vistas, but people keep their yards nice. There's only one traffic signal, and it's been blinking amber day and night for as long as anyone remembers. We don't send a lot of kids to Harvard or Yale, but a lot of them do go through 4-H, where they learn to help each other out. Folks marry their high school sweethearts and stay married to them. There's nobody on food stamps. You should you know. check with Mr. Holmes at the grocery. <laughs> but hey, if your house burns down, everybody rushes in with casseroles and clean socks. There's no crime to speak of, and not many lawsuits either. Oh, uh, once about every two or three years, some hunter from out of town walks over somebody's property and leaves a mess. And that's about as bad as it gets. We've never needed but three caps or cops on this town for as long as anyone can remember because nobody dared take anything from anybody else, especially considering the level of gun ownership. Plus, there's nothing worth taking. <laughs> now, if I did run for mayor, I wouldn't change a thing, which is exactly why I will not run for mayor. Not now, not ever. But Kev, come on. I mean, you know, I did not file my retirement papers in order to give myself more aggravation. Oh, no. If we need all this government so badly to make everything better, a proposition I questioned to begin with, nobody else could do it. Somebody else could do it. Somebody else has been doing it. This town has been run by incompetent do-nothings for decades, and that was okay with them. And that was okay then, but it won't do now. Lucky for us, real estate values have been tumbling. Uh, sure sounds lucky. Yuppies. 
Do they still have those? Uh, they can't afford to live in the city, but they can afford a nice place, a uh, nice big place up here with a yard for the kids. And they'll put up with the 90 minute commute for some peace and quiet. Great, problem solved. Except in order to attract them, we need to pave all our roads. All of them? Build a sewage system. Improve the schools. Improve the teachers. Don't get started, Stella. Uh, I mean, the woman started to recite, I pledge of allegiance. <laughs> That's not how it goes. Everybody knows it's, I pledge allegiance. No of. Uh, I'm not sure I like the sound of all this change. Not to mention the cost. If we raise property taxes, people will go look for houses over in Fairburn or Grant City. And I'll never have to be mayor. But if we bring in new businesses and new rateables, attract those kind of companies that those millennials are already working for, software, a customer service, billing. Uh, great. So in order to save our quiet little town, you want me to destroy it? Uh, turn it into another Fairburn? I just soon as let it let us fade off into the sunset. So you're willing to throw in the towel just to avoid being bothered? Uh, look, Stella, government doesn't solve problems. Government is the problem. Bad government is the problem. Besides, you've been a government employee for, for 25 years. That's different. You're different. Uh, I'm starting to regret stopping here. I think I'd rather have a, have a hangover. Listen. I'm a libertarian. The government that governs least governs best. That's Thomas Jefferson. Well, then, you can make sure we have the least possible government. <laughs> no, no. Government is a big pain in the ass and it gets in the way. So you're perfectly qualified. Yeah, don't pay any mind to Stella. She's not from here anyway. I I've lived here for 40 years. Not, not from, from here. here. <sighs> well, uh, thanks for the kind words. Uh, Jack, but forget it. You know, I'm not going to become a politician and anyone who thinks I am must be drunk. Go home. Some respect for your campaign manager. All right, you two have had enough coffee. You can, you can both go home. What do we owe you? Forget it. That's my campaign contribution. My last one. I'm not running for mayor. Good. Get out. Scene two. Kevin's bathroom. Or his sink, anyway. Kevin is shaving, and there's no glass where the mirror should be. So that as he addresses Donna's picture, taped to the side of the mirror, he is looking directly at us. I guess I told him, who wants to be mayor? Who wants me to be mayor? What do I know? What, honey? Well, yes, I know people. I know my squad and what they could do and how to organize them. Uh, and I know how to talk to homeowners and insurance investigators. Uh, I'm not a complete idiot, despite how I look. Oh, you never had any sense anyway. After all, you married me. You know, oh, you know, you never had any sense anyway, Donna. After all, you know, I'm the smartest guy in the country. You know, I'm the guy that married you. Damn it, Donna, I miss you so bad. But it hurts worse than when I pulled my back in the Holton Mansion fire. What? No, I was not changing the subject. I, no, I absolutely refuse. Absolutely. I will not run for mayor of Liberty's Corner. Scene three, the diner, mid-morning. Jack is reading the paper and Stella is topping his mug. The front door slams to reveal Kevin. I'm running for Mayor of Liberty's Corner. You happy now? Coffee? What? Yes. Uh, hey, I, I changed my mind. Aren't you surprised? No. Am I that obvious? Uh, the word I use is simple. Uh, don't you even want to know why I changed my mind? Donna! Donna. Blessed memory. To Donna. I love you, honey. Okay. What I need now is a video of you with a nice, clear statement of your candidacy to put up on all the social media. Hmm. Where shall we shoot it? Um, how about down at the, the Grange by the flagpole? What's better than right here? All these flags and Miss Liberty statues? Go sit over there. Did you bring the camera? A camera? Turn a little this way. You're squinting. Where's the camera? 
We use phones now. Your phone has a camera on it. Oh, that's right. Good thing that you're not shooting now. Your candidate is woefully out of step. Out of step? Mm -hmm. If being instep means knowing all the widgets and gadgets, then fine. Guilty as charged. I'm out of step. But in my book, being out of step means having a lot of opinions about politics and TV and rap music and not knowing the names of people who live on your block. Being out of step is getting excited about who's politically correct and who's got freedom of speech and not knowing who needs a job or maybe could use winter coats for the kids and offer, a you know, offer them to babysit. Being out of touch is having a government plan for every ill known to mankind. When a beer and a friendly ear is all somebody really needs. I don't know, maybe it's different down by the cities, but in Liberty's Corner, we're all neighbors. And cut! <laughs> There's your first speech as, candidate, as a candidate. Now we just upload it to McEnany for uh, mayor.org and you are hereby publicly announced. Oh, I'll be damned. Um, it's amazing how all the kids know how to do this. I know how to do it, and I'm two years older than you, Kev. <laughs> What's next? Uh, we put out a call for uh, volunteers. Uh, volunteers? For me? I saw it! Your video! Online! <laughs> Kevin, it's so exciting! How can I help? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Jack, j you know, he just uh, started... Mary, uh, you're on the, uh, the women's auxiliary, aren't you? Which one? The Grange, the Elks, or the Episcopalians? All of them. Arrange for Kevin here to be the luncheon speaker at their very next meeting. If they've already got a luncheon speaker, he'll be the dessert speaker. <laughs> if they have a dessert speaker, Kevin will help fold the tables and sweep up. Hey! <laughs> Just get him in front of as many ladies as you can. Well, what's the message? Uh, Kevin, you reach corner. We're all neighbors. Oh, that's um, nice. <laughs> what does it mean? Well, you know, it means that we're all, we all, we know we're supposed all right, to. let me know when you worked it out. Wait, Stella, come back. Okay, what, what is it? Uh, you know, I need a hand. Yeah? Uh, Melanie, uh, a word. What else? I'm up for anything. Can you get some folks together to make uh, posters, lawn signs, uh, flyers, hat bands? Uh, what's your budget? Zip. Oh, I know, just the people. <laughs> What's this mess? Uh, you gotta help me. Donna always took care of this stuff. Why me, Kevin? Well, you're the town controller. You're supposed to know about numbers and money and stuff. I don't remember volunteering for this. Oh, please, Stella. I promise to take all my meals here. How will I keep my other customers? <laughs> please. And keep close to him, Melanie. Why? You never know what Kevin's gonna say. Well, he may not be very articulate, but he says what he thinks. That's what I'm afraid of. Okay, Kevin. First event, a big spaghetti dinner down at the firehouse in honor of your retirement and to announce your campaign. Uh, all right, but forget the spaghetti. I'm making my three and a half fire alarm Texas chili. It's famous. With who? The folks at the emergency room? <laughs> I may never make a memorable speech, but you will remember my chili. You say, you say that like it's a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we uh, do it next Friday, uh, in place of the weekly potluck? Great! Instead of potluck, it'll be Russian roulette. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there at 7. 7? I gotta get something to eat. Uh, shut up. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest way. Scene four, the diner. Fade in on Stella standing by a service cart with an industrial size pot on it. Kevin is tasting the contents with a wooden spoon. <coughs> Stella, what the hell is that? That's the three and a half alarm chili recipe you gave me. My recipe does not contain cumin. <laughs> This chili is about 45% jalapenos, and you can taste cumin? What's all the yelling? <laughs> Stella, she's trying to poison me. As usual. <laughs> As usual, but in this case, with my own chili recipe. Why is she kicking, cooking your chili? I wanted to generously share my internationally celebrated chili recipe with good citizens of Liberty's Corner. Uh, only Stella has decided to commit mass murder. Uh, 
You need to talk to Tariq. Tariq? Who's Tariq? My cook. Your Since what? what? <laughs> Don't you mind Chet fell asleep dead drunk right into 30 gallons of waffle batter a few weeks back? I thought those waffles were a bit off. I hired a new cook. What is he, a robot? What do you mean? Tariq? My name is Tariq uh, from the planet Schnork. Beep, beep. Actually, it's a pretty common name. Uh, not in Liberty's Corner. But it is in Aleppo, where I come from. It means star. Uh, it still doesn't explain what cumin is doing in my chili recipe. Oh, I found that in Southern Living. Cumin in chili is as common as the name Tariq. Meaning not common here? Did you know there's a correlation between intelligence and the willingness to eat unfamiliar food? You made that up. Maybe. <laughs> the point is that it's supposed to be familiar food. Well, at least to me. It's my recipe. It's my calling card to the voters. That's okay, Chief. I'm not going to the map for cumin. I'll leave the cumin out. I'm Tariq B. Uh, do you mind tossing this pot out and starting all over again from scratch? I'm going to show you how to make proper Texas chili. As the proverb says, it's your dime. Toss away one thing. How late are we going? Oh, I don't know. Nine? Nine thirty? Hmm. I'll need a ride to the city. That's an hour and a half away. It's where I live. You drive an hour and a half to work? I take the train, so it's more like two and a quarter hours. <laughs> you travel five hours a day? Day both ways to work? I can't stay away from the glamour and excitement of Liberty's Corner. Uh, you're a weird duck. <laughs> you're flattery overwhelmed. <laughs> I like you. I'll drive you myself. Uh, is there any meat left? There's another 50 pounds of stewy cuts, shoulders and shank mostly. Where did you say you learned how to make chili? I didn't. Uh, Baton Rouge, right? YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Scene five, the diner. Night, fade up on Kevin, Tariq, prepping the ingredients. What are you doing over there with uh, the cumin? I thought you said you wanted Texas chili. If this is Texas chili, what are you doing with those bags of beans for? Real Texas chili does not have beans. Number one, are we in Texas? No. Very well. Number two, how many people do you want to come to this thing? As many as possible. Beans are a stretcher. We could deliver 15 to 20% more servings with those beans included. I wouldn't think of chili without them. How are the ham rinds coming? Uh, I'm surprised you included ham in the recipe. Uh, your religion and all. <laughs> That's why I let you prep it. Almost done. Uh, how are you going to taste the result? I have a confession to make. I didn't learn to make chili on YouTube. I didn't think so. So where was it? The county line in Austin. You mean Austin? 45 minutes down from Route 23? Uh, I mean Austin, Texas. How would you find yourself in Austin? You may still live in the town you were born, but believe it or not, it's pretty, pretty easy to get around this country. But Austin, I mean, you in Austin? What is that supposed to mean? Well, you know, you're... Here, you can grind the coriander seeds through the coffee grinder. Coffee grinder? Ah, uh, I forgot where it was. Chop and grind them into a paste. A paste? Do How? Your, do your best. Hmm? Do you cook at home? Sometimes, when I'm there. How about you? Since, when my, since my wife died, I take most of my meals here at the diner. I'm sorry. You don't have to apologize for your cooking. I wasn't uh, apologizing. I was just kidding. Your cooking is fine. It's just too damn hard to set a table for one and eat in silence. I noticed you don't like silence. Hmm? Ouch. <laughs> fair, fair shot, though. Uh, this pasty, this looks pasty enough for you? It's a good start. Keep at it. Uh, so, Tarek. Tarek. Uh, Tarek. Uh, you married? 18 years. Kids? A boy and two girls. Uh, that makes your household uh, three to two favor the females. Is that difficult? No, no, no. My wife has raised two very sweet young ladies. Here, here. I have a picture. Hmm. Here we are. Uh, it's together uh, on vacation in Dauphin. Oh, a very beautiful family. Yeah. Um, your daughters wear the headscarves, even though you're all at the beach. The hijab, yes. Oh, isn't it uncomfortable for them? I mean, don't they feel, I don't know, all covered up? 
If you had a daughter and you took her to the beach, would you permit her to wear a swimming costume that shows her bosoms? I would not. The principle is the same. We both believe women should be modest. Even so, uh, with those pretty girls, pretty soon you're going to have to fight off a lot of uh, young bucks hanging around your door. <laughs> My daughters are already engaged. Engaged? How old are they? Fatima is 14 and Naima is 11. They're engaged? When will they get married? Don't worry. Not for a long time. They must finish their education. Fatima wants to be a doctor and you know what that takes. How did they get engaged so young? We were introduced to the parents of the young men who come from very fine families. It's not difficult to make a marriage agreement. What about falling in love? <laughs> there are many ways to find yourself in love. Hmm? Falling as if you had a stumble is only one. Mm. Uh, I guess I look at it different. Uh, I was lucky enough to find the perfect woman and somehow convince her to marry me. Yes, I have heard that your wife was indeed lovely. But by your own words, you were lucky. If you look at, at, at American marriage statistics, if you look at American marriage statistics, the odds were against you. My wife and I, on the other hand, know our children very well. And by using our judgment and our connections in the community, we have improved the odds of success in family life. What is wrong with that? Uh, I, I just can't see how you could pick up a future husband or a wife for a young child and know that for a fact they're going to love each other and make a life together. I can't see how that could work. And it might not work for an American-born girl. But my parents did the very good thing for me and picked up my Zara, and here we are 18 years later. So if you've got such a great family, why do you work so far from home? Uh, this is what I could get. It will probably take me another two or three years to be certified as a civil engineer here, so while I'm... Wait a minute. You're a civil engineer? University of Aleppo. It's famous for civil engineering. In Syria, I built more highway bridges than you could count. So you're fully qualified to... Not, no, not here. I need... Uh, uh, you already passed the exam. I, I, I... Uh, I'm sorry, I cut you off. Take it from... Uh, um, sorry. <laughs> so you're fully qualified to... <laughs> not there. <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, there, that's good. <laughs> sorry, where did we start again? I Same place, so you're fully All qualified. Right. I, I apologize. So you're fully qualified no, to... No, 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 not here. I need a firm to sponsor me. I think you'd take the exam. You already passed the exam, though. I no, mean, don't... not here. Every country does things their own way. Engineering, child rearing... M marriage? I don't claim one way is better than the other. They're just different, and that's okay, right? Right. Hmm. America, this is the place where you're free to do things the way you want, right? Right. So... I want to become an American as soon as I can. You can do anything here. I love my own homeland, but there are a lot of rules there about what you can do, what you can't do. Uh, like marry for love? <laughs> Go ahead, tease me. Americans can laugh at themselves, right? Right. And meanwhile, I can teach people how to make a good all-American Texas three alarm chili. Three and a half. <laughs> three and a half. Scene six. Kevin appears in a video. I, um... Did you start? Yes, just go ahead. Okay. Uh, hi, I'm Kevin. Uh, I guess most of you know me. I used to be the fire chief and I might have helped put out a fire in your home or business these last 25 years. Start over. What? Why? You have to say you're running for mayor first before you go into your story. Oh, right, right. Okay? Still rolling. Uh, you'll cut this out, right? Talk. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm Kevin, and I'm running for mayor of Liberty Corner. I lived here all my life. As a former chief, I've been in a lot of your homes. I know this town, and I know her people. Liberty's Corner is a town full of neighbors, where everybody knows who goes to which church, and nobody cares where if you had to run quick to the hospital, you could find someone to mind your kids. And if you had enough people, you could still find a place to t take and walk and clear your head. We're not perfect. The school could use a fix-up. The police station could be updated. But what we don't need is a lot of fussing and meddling for its own sake, like we've seen in some of our neighbor towns. You know, that swanky chain coffee shops and the fancy b bs to bring visitors up from the cities every weekend. I'm gonna have to take that out. 
Why? You can't go knocking other towns in your speech. You don't know who's listening. Stick to your topic. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, let me start again. Rolling. Uh, the point is, Liberty's Corner is plenty good. And that's good enough. And I'm good enough to keep it plenty good. Please vote for me. What are you running for? No! You say it! Come election day, vote for me. Uh, uh, come election day, vote for me. Kevin McInerney. Uh, Kevin McInerney. Good boy. You get a cookie. I don't know why I ever listen to you about anything. <laughs> Scene setter! Stella is sweeping up. A stranger is nursing his after-dinner coffee in the corner. He's wearing a cheap summer suit. Kevin, Tariq, Jack, and Melanie enter carrying pots, spoons, and other implements from the chili diner dinner at the firehouse. They take turns bringing what they carry into the kitchen upstate to put in the sink. Did you see Ruth Miller's version of the electric slide? Oh, stop, Jack. It was cute. <laughs> he looked like a one-legged steeplejack trying to catch a greased pig. <laughs> I think the folks had a good time. Uh, they sure liked the chili, right, Tariq? Who was the gentleman who bought his own hot sauce? <laughs> oh, that's George Larson. He fancies himself an expert on spicy food. He managed to leave the building unassisted, but I'm afraid he may be in need of a professional attention before dawn. I know I would like to share a bathroom with him. Poor Carrie. Hey, Tariq, you, you leave those dishes be. I'll, I'll wash them up in the morning. But the food will be custard solid. I thrive on hardship. Why do you think I live here? Where do you suppose Alvin is by now? What happened to Alvin? He drank himself to sleep, and the rest of the firefighters walked him over to the station, bought him a ticket, and put him on the train. <laughs> oh, jeez. I hope you woke up in time to get off at Turley. <laughs> I can't get off at Turley. We'd have to ride straight on through to South Village, cause... Oh, oh that's right. right. Uh, it's after 10 o'clock. Uh, there's no station in Turley anymore. And no post office either. What? We told you. The state's looking at every town under 10,000. They've sent a stack of forms and reports for me to fill out as town comptroller. It's weeks of work. And if they don't like what they see, Liberty's Corner might not be a town anymore. They're closing Prescott Memorial. I don't know where I'm going to put my mother. I don't care what you say. This is still a wonderful town. Ah, uh, you can't even get a decent bagel here. Well, you can't. I don't think you'd say it's so wonderful if you, if you were 22 or 23 and just starting out in life. Where's the social life, the clubs, the coffee places? Hey, we serve coffee. <laughs> Stella, do you even know what a macchiato is? It's got nutmeg, right? No, forget coffee. Where's the jobs? If you're not taking over your family's business, what is there to keep you here? Hey, he's right. These little towns are going the way of the horse and buggy. Well, you're welcome to your opinion, Mr. Fiedler. Carl Fiedler. I... Oh, everyone knows you, Chief. Uh, retired Chief. You have excellent timing. In a few months, you may not have anything to chief over. I don't think that's as bad as uh, all that. Look, I understand your feelings. I come from a little town just like this. That's why I bought a house here last year. Bought a house? Last year. Oh, yeah. Mr. Fiedler is fixing up the old Fraser place near the bluff since March of last year. You knew about this? That someone had moved in is, and is fixing up an old house? Is that headline news? March? You're eligible to vote in this election. <laughs> yes, I'm planning to. I think other voices need to be heard here. What do you mean by that? Well, like I said, I love small towns. But life is about change, right? Change is inevitable. And if you fight it too hard, you can get hurt. Now we have a choice in Liberty's Corner. I'm not entirely comfortable with the way you say we, Mr. Fiedler, being perfectly honest. <laughs> Look, you can let all this happen. Let the state incorporate the town, let the schools close, watch your property values shrink, see town assets revert to the state, or you can be proactive. What does that mean? Well, you need to realize the value of the assets you do have before they're lost. Don't let the state just take the land. 
put the commons and the bluff on the market? The bluff? Well, what, would, what good would it do for the town to sell the land if the town is dissolved? No, not the town. If you examine the deeds, the, those public lands belong to the residents, not to the town. Stella? He's right. What's the difference? <laughs> the difference is that the residents can divide up the proceeds from such sales directly, rather than letting a bureaucracy absorb them. Same goes for the schools, the parks, the band shell. The band shell? The ball field. How could, <laughs> that could be cash in everybody's pocket. Who wouldn't want that? Oh, in other words, if it's going to happen to you, you might as well lay back and enjoy it. Look, Mr. Durbin, can you tell me exactly how your life is better because you live in a town rather than an unincorporated uh, region? Does it make you run faster, jump higher? Does it make your food tastier, the women prettier? Clearly, it does nothing for the men's looks. Hey, <laughs> Town or no town, what's the difference? It's still a pretty place to live. We still have nice neighbors, and we'll have a whole lot less taxes to pay. And less to say about how things are run. Oh, come on now. How much does anybody who's not collecting a salary from it really get involved in town business? You've seen the school board meetings on Channel 12. Nobody ever shows up, <laughs> except to complain about the cost of senior rings. Well, why would they go if they can watch it on Channel 12? Look, people yell and holler about local control, but you give them local control, and they don't bother to exercise it. Meanwhile, that so-called power no one cares to exercise is worth real cash money, but only if we're willing to step up and say, yes, please, give me what I'm entitled to. So uh, if you had to choose between rights and money, you choose money? You know that's a gross oversimplification. I'm still a citizen of this state and this country. I've got plenty of rights. Oh, oh. So you would sell some of your rights, but not others. How do you decide which is which? Uh, calm down, Jack. Reasonable folks can talk and discuss and even disagree without fighting. You have a refreshing folk wisdom, Chief. Uh, is that a way of saying I'm uneducated? What's the alternative to my plan? Seriously. How else do we, do we forestall the inevitable? That's what we're talking about in our campaign. Rebuilding the tax base, uh, getting, some new rate of, uh, getting some new businesses in here to increase the rateables. And who will work these businesses? New folks. Folks from, uh, from, uh, from up the cities and, and around the valley, generally. <sighs> and, <laughs> and when will it, what, sorry, and what will they bring? Will we need to have a chicken and a waffle place? A falafel house? A mosque, so people can pray five times a day. Would that be so bad? Look, I thought we were talking about saving this town, about keeping like it is. If people want to live in the cities, that's fine. Let them live in the cities. Let them sell out and pack up and go down to the cities and mix with all kind of different folks, if that's what they want. It's a free country, right? I've heard rumors to that effect. Easy, Tariq. Uh, you know, Mr. Fiedler, it's not like we've never seen folks from out of town. Hey, Jack, remember that week in the country with the kids? Oh, yeah, that, that was great. Those kids were so sweet. See, Mr. Fiedler, we used to invite about 100 kids to come up from the cities on the train to spend a week here and play in the fresh air and sunshine. A hundred families with their arms open wide to welcome some stranger kids to be their guest. More than that. Kevin, do you remember when Pam figured out that little girl needed glasses? <laughs> That's right, our Lita. Uh, she was as smart as a whip, and we couldn't figure out why she was getting D's in school. Mm -hmm. uh, Pam figured out to take her uh, for an eye test and let her pick out a nice set of sparkly cat eyeglasses. Those city kids were playing different, but in the, in the end, they were just kids. Well, that's a nice story. The point is, Chief, you're going to have to make a choice. If you want to be the mayor, the people of this town are entitled to expect you to stand up on your hind legs and protect their interests. Tell them this town will not become a charity case run by the state or some kind of a, what do you call them, a multicultural center. Uh, you know, my folk wisdom enables me to read between the lines. Well, when you promise to keep the town just like it is, you had better know that's an empty promise. 
Change is coming. In fact, you can keep it. You all know I'm not going to do any of that the stuff you said, right? Well, you know, Kev, listen. You better go home and get some rest. Tomorrow you've got to talk, you have to give a talk to the, um... The Odd Fellows. Uh, I, I promised Tariq that I'd give him a lift back to the city. I'll take care of that. No, Jack. Uh, I think I'm the one who should take him home. Maybe you're right. Oh, well, it's time for me to hit the road to dreamland. Good night, everyone. I'll uh, back into your car. Uh, Kevin, would you wait, wait for me a second? Uh, I, I need to talk to Tariq. Sure. Have you had a chance to think over my proposition? I think the price is a little high, but would you entertain it counter offer? I would entertain the plumbers union, their wives, and their girlfriends if it means I could retire. <laughs> <laughs> I, I need to be sure that this place has a future, that this town has a future. Give me some time. Uh, hurry up. I'm expecting an offer from the Sultan of Brunei. <laughs> What's up? Just wondering if you've become a gentleman of wealth and leisure. Uh, not so as I noticed. Me neither. <laughs> Which makes me wonder if you know what all goes into your running for mayor. Uh, I know the hours are long and the pay is short, but it's important work. And besides, I got my pension from the fire department. Sit down, Kevin. No one ever says that in order to give you good news, do they? As you know, I'm going through this audit and reviewing the town books and regulations and bylaws and things. And there's this new state law they passed about eight or ten years back. I don't need the whole story from the beginning of time, Stella. Just get to where it passes by my front door. No one is allowed to take more than one stream of income from the state government. That's right. We had a whole lot of uh, double dipping going on, and I remember when, oh, wait. That's right. The mayor gets a salary of $22,500 a year. If you win the election and you get the mayor's salary, you will have to cut off your pension payments, at least until you're out of office. 22500 I can't live on that, even in Liberty's Corner. Nobody can. Being mayor is supposed to be part-time. Maybe I could get myself impeached right away. Uh, you know, I can be pretty dumb. It's pretty hard to be that bad at the job. Uh, don't underestimate me. <laughs> Come on, enough kidding, Kevin. What do you think? I don't know. Uh, I guess I should drop out, huh? Well, it really makes the most sense. But I do really want this, though. Well, we don't always get what we want. Mm hmm. Well... Tariq is waiting for me. Um, I better get going. What are you going to do? I'm going to get the best available advice. Cine! Kevin is eating cereal. Donna's frame photo faces him. I agree. There's something weird about having a craving for Captain Crunch when you've, when you've ingested about six gallons of chili. But facts are facts. I can't explain it. I'm not sure, you know, I'm not some kind of medical genius like Jonas Salk or something. All right, I'll admit it. I'm a stress eater. You've always known that. It's ironic. I worked for 25 years to earn that pension, putting in extra nights and not taking vacations, just to run the numbers up as much as I could. We were going to eat out regularly take trips, maybe get a lake house. And you left me. And I don't think that was fair. I had such a nice dream of being mayor. Not a big dream, a, you know, a nice compact size dream to be useful. Hmm. But I go through all of our savings until I'm flat broke. I won't be useful to anybody. I'll have to become a crazy guy at the town meetings with fistful of clippings and a tinfoil hat. What do you think, Donna? Shall I become the village crank? Well, anyway, I can't become the village beggar. Sweetie, I'm sorry. I promise. Cross my heart, pinky swear. I will make this up to you somehow. 
Just let me know I'm doing the right thing. Uh, send me a message. That's all I need. You know, it doesn't have to be a big thing. It could be, uh, I don't know, a bird call or a pretty sunset or a check from the publisher's clearinghouse. I'll be here listening. Scene 9. Kevin appears in a video. Okay, okay, go ahead. Are you sure you know how to, this works? Uh, what's to know? A point? Push the button on, push the button off. It's just that Jack, you know, he used to... Come on, Jack refused to have anything to do with this, so just be grateful I'm here and get on with it. All right. Uh, Come on. I'm sorry. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> oh, okay. Any time now. I I'm Kevin, and I'm running for Mayor of Liberty's Corner. I mean, I was running for mayor, but now I'm not. I can't. You see... There's this rule, or it's a law or a regulation, I don't know. It's something that says that if I get a salary as mayor, I'll lose my pension from the fire department. I worked 25 years for that pension, and I'm, you know, entitled to it. And, and it's what I have to rely on for the rest of my life. I, I can't give that up. So long story short... About you know, time. I'm asking you not to vote for me for mayor. That is very hard to say. A lot of you have been very, very nice to me and told me how much you plan to support me. So I really, so it really kind of hurts to have to turn around and say, no, don't vote for me. But if you really like me as much as you say you do, then I gotta ask this favor. Don't vote for me. No matter who else is running and what they say and they're going to do, look, there's nothing I like better than help steer this town through some complicated times you know we got coming but not as mayor it's like someone said uh, you can't always get what you want that was the rolling stones i thought it was you i heard you just say it the stones said it first oh okay so i guess that's it i'm kevin mcneary and don't vote for me not even for a joke i, I can't afford it don't vote for me thanks and i'm sorry I'm really, really sorry. Okay, that's it. Uh, that's enough. Scene 10. The diner. Kevin and Melody are seated at a table with spreadsheets splayed across it. Tariq sets down coffee for each of them with a crow for Kevin and a croissant for Melody. I can't believe I've appeared before this many different groups already. Jack is pretty good at organizing things when he puts his mind to it. Did he say anything to you about why he couldn't come? Oh, Kevin, can't you work it out? He's mad at me? Oh, he's disappointed. He really believes in what you could do for the town. Are you mad at me too? Nobody's mad at you. I even made a poster. <laughs> Sometimes things don't work out, that's all. So what now? People are going to be confused. You went to the meetings of nearly every group in town, and you got people pretty whipped up. One little video is not going to turn that around. One third of this town doesn't even have internet. Somebody should do something, you know. You're going to have to go and visit every one of those groups and tell them you're not running and that they shouldn't vote for you. Every single group? If you're serious about losing, you're going to have to put some serious effort into it. Now, you have to make yourself crystal clear to as many people as possible. I'm Kevin. Don't vote for me. We're going Whole to need milk, right? yeah, thanks. more banners, more posters, lawn signs, every way you can tell them not to vote for you because in Liberty's corner terms, you have a tidal wave of support. I never thought I'd ever say, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, perhaps I should make a contribution to help you get your message out? Why would you want to do that? Because I'm running for mayor myself. You? You're running? It figures. <laughs> yes. I think folks are tired of business as usual. High taxes and nothing to show for it. High taxes? The average household assessment in this town is about 800 bucks. 
Now, what do we get for that? Uh, last year we got a brand new, uh, you know, can, can tuple truck with a 60-foot ladder. That's, uh, you know, taller than any building in town. <laughs> That's typical kind of government waste. I think most folks would be happy to give up a fancy fire truck for zero dollars in taxes. Zero? <laughs> If there's no town, there's no town assessment. Oh, you can bet the state will get theirs no matter what. <laughs> well, wouldn't that be so either way? By monetizing the town assets and distributing them to people instead of big government... <laughs> big government! <laughs> you've got some money to pay whatever the state wants to take out of your hive. Uh, I'll bet you uh, will get a lot of uh, votes for that. I think so, too. And without you in the race, I should get all the votes, period. I'll start a write-in campaign for Kevin. Oh, God, no, Melanie. Do you want to ruin me? <laughs> and the additional side benefit is that we get to keep Liberty's Corner the pure, old-fashioned way it used to be, with a lot, without a lot of outside people in their ways. People brought in, like it or not, just to prop up the revenue of the bureaucracy. You just moved in here. How, how do you know how it used to be? Oh, uh, come on, Chief. When was this place a hotbed of, uh, what, do you, what do you call it, uh, diversity? I don't remember seeing halal food at Little League. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not against any group or another. It's just that everybody's more comfortable when everybody's the same. Uh, and that's the goal? To be comfortable? I mean, look, I'm not a six-figure political consultant or anything, but making people uncomfortable doesn't sound like a winning strategy to me. And that's what you know. Isn't that what people like about small towns? To be able to live with people like themselves? What do you mean, people like people like themselves? Look, people who just want to raise their families in peace and harmony, choose their own friends, honor their country. Isn't that everybody? Chief, come on. You know exactly what I mean. Yes, I'm afraid I do. Did I say something wrong? That's not for me to decide. Uh, Good luck, Mr. Fiedler. I'm going home. Good night, Melanie. Good night, Stella. I've never seen him like that. Do you think I should go and... No, 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 leave him be. Uh, you're going to order something, Mr. Fiedler? You're not going to throw me out? I'm not the big bad boogeyman? Who said anything like that? Well, I know you're friends with the chief and... So naturally I'd pick a fight with you, I guess? I guess not. You don't know much about how we do what we do here. So, how's your hot open face turkey sandwich? Yeah, you could do worse. Hot Tom on a punk! Hot Tom on a punk! It'll be a little while. I got time. You do? Tell me, what do you think I could get from Miss Liberty? This place? End of act one. Act two, scene one. Kevin is shaving, talking to Don. I used to be able to get two weeks of uh, shaves out of these blades. Now they barely last a week. Wow, I really am turning into an old geezer. Complain about how things aren't as good as they used to be. Excuse me, Don. I gotta go yell at some kids to get off our lawn. Oh well, everything changes, I guess. I don't like it, but I got my reasons. Uh, like the night you told me you were sick. Uh, that was a change. I remember literally feeling dizzy as if the couch we were sitting on was uh, spinning backwards over a huge black pit. Uh, the only way I could handle it was to pretend it wasn't true. You didn't have that option, John. You kept on. Uh, you kept fighting. And when I should have been taking care of you, you took care of me. You looked at me and saw how completely helpless I was. You got up out of your sick bed, barely able to stand, and you taught me how to take care of myself. Cooking, cleaning, balancing the checkbook. I hate them, but I can do them. You did your best to you know, get me ready for when you left. And you know what happened? You never left. I told you I hate change. So, like it or not, Donna, I'm keeping you right here with me. I, I need you. 
I need you to tell me what to do or what to say. Send me helpers. Tell me when I'm wrong. So Donna, what do I do? If I win, I'll run through our savings in a couple of years. If I drop out, they'll put a big for sale sign on Liberty's Corner. Well, the world may change, but I don't want to. I don't want to give up on trips to the Purple Cow for ice cream after the sixth grade move-in ceremony, or band concerts on the common, or quiet walks up Greenwood Hill to lay wreath on Memorial Day. But in order to do that, we're going to have to do a whole lot of stuff we've never done before, according to Jack. And I don't even know what we'll be keeping and what we'll be losing. Donna, honey, I can't keep losing things. I'm still waiting for that message. Scene two. Kevin in a video again. Okay, Kevin. I'm rolling. Kevin? Yo, buddy, let's go. Come on. I'm proud of you. You're doing the right thing. Am I? That's easy for you to say. You gonna take me in when I lose my house? Kevin, you're not gonna lose your house. I wouldn't let that happen. I'm so looking forward to living the rest of my life off of charity. Focus on the task in front of you right now. Who died and made you Mr. Miyagi? You want me to write something out for you? No, no. I'll figure out what to say. Whenever you're ready. You'll cut this stuff out, right? Don't I always? Come on, Kevin. Strap it on and start talking. Hi. Kevin again. I'm sure you're good and sick of me and my videos by now. But I have to... I couldn't avoid... Um, I was... Uh, take a second and start over. Hey. It's Kevin. And I'm running for mayor. Yes, I actually am. I know I said I wasn't, but I changed my mind. Again. I changed my mind again. See, what happened was... Never mind. That's nobody's business. <sighs> Sometimes there's something you have to do, even if it doesn't make sense. Uh, even if it's dangerous and risky. Even if it's the most foolish thing you've ever done. Uh, that's why you have to vote for me. Stop, Kevin. What? That came out all wrong. I was really starting to roll. We'll try this again later. Scene three, at the diner. Stella and Kevin are sorting through a pile of tax receipts. Tariq sits with them drinking coffee. I know there should be a half dozen more 1099s from Donna's investments, but, but I can't find anything. Uh, what about this? That's a ticket to the 2013 County Fair and Horse Show. What is this even doing there? Yeah, but that sounds like it was fun. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> How come uh, you have a, a spare ticket? Uh, well, that's a strange... I mean, you could have asked me alone. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, I didn't know you... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's okay, I forgive you. <laughs> uh, I don't know, Stella. Um, I let Donna take care of all you know, this sort of stuff. I, I really don't see anything here like what you would need to complete a return. Uh, are you sure there aren't any other boxes at home? Uh, from what you say, there's got to be, right? Uh -huh, I sure hope so. What about passwords to any of your online accounts? Uh, maybe, maybe she wrote them? Uh, uh, sorry, I, I was putting out fires. Uh, well, that is no excuse for not knowing anything about your own money. Look, Kevin, I've got to be honest with you. Everyone's seen the video, and they're all in. I admit, it took a lot of explaining by me. But I know you can count on all the people you know and believe in you. Kevin, I am so proud of you. It's time to get back to work. Uh, th thanks, both of you. Oh, I can't stay. I have more people to see. Oh. Thanks, Stella. I'll see you later. <laughs> We've got to lay out a plan so everyone can see and we're not going to just lay down and let Liberty's Corner fade away into the sunset. Oh, that's what I was about to tell you, Kevin. I, I don't have much time to help with your taxes. The audit package has arrived from the state and, and it's, a, it's a week of work. How long can you slow walk that package? I'll do what I can, but hell or high water, 
The deadline is right after election. The new mayor will have to have any proposals they want to make ready to go. So, Chief, how, how are we going to uh, pump up the rateables enough to keep the state from dissolving us into a vat of uncooperation? <laughs> Jack, do you remember summers when we would bomb around town on our bikes all day long? Yeah, we usually would wind up at the pool, because that snack bar had the best fries. Uh, I don't know how good the fries were, uh, but it was fun seeing Judy Wolf shake the fry basket in that teeny, tiny, <laughs> powdered blue bikini. Be still my heart. I don't think it was your heart that was pounding. Uh, anyway, uh, remember the time we broke into the old store factory building by the creek? Uh, you kept asking me if you th I thought it was haunted, which it is, obviously. Uh, what would you say the square footage of that building is? Uh, I reckon around... 60,000 square feet? 65,000 and change. I maintain the tax rolls. <laughs> Who owns it? The town. After the shoe company folded, the town wound up taking the place for unpaid taxes. Uh, so someone could uh, put in a call center, uh, maybe customer service, or taking credit card orders. Uh, three or four different companies, maybe uh, 65,000 feet. That should fit. I don't know uh, how many offices. Yeah, between the 325 and 433 employees, depending on how you group them and the size of the break rooms. How do you figure that? Desk workers take up between 150 and 200 square feet each. And you know that? How? Uh, Tariq is an ace civil engineer. He knows all that stuff. Uh, he studied in Aleppo. You know, Aleppo? <laughs> but if you go ahead with that idea, office space is not your problem. What do you mean? Well, to begin with, you need proper water and, and waste treatment, not to mention high-speed internet capacity, congestion, parking, and, and most of all, where can you go for lunch? Stella, <laughs> why don't you build an annex? <laughs> Looking around here, I'd say I'm already letting too many people in. The, the, the biggest question of all, where do these workers come from? Well, uh, they could come from towns, towns all around. So, how many people live within a half hour drive of here? Half hour is about 12 to 15 miles. Hmm. About 18,000. And uh, how many of them are working adults? Roughly 25%. 4,500. How many of them would be looking for work total? 300 tops. How many of them are qualified and willing to take a job here at our new office complex? Mm -hmm. If you're lucky, 100. So, you've taken care of maybe a third of your needs at best. Then what do we do? Make places here for people to live. You mean like dorms? <laughs> I mean like homes. Houses? Houses. Garden apartments, bungalows, the whole mix. And that will require even more infrastructure, more roads. Have to expand the schools. Mm. And the fire department. Mm. And with that money, and with that many new units at once, you're going to trigger, you know... What? Uh, an expansion the... like that... Uh, What's the problem? An expansion like that triggers the, uh, trips the six, Section 8 requirements. What's Section 8? Um, isn't that how you get out of the Army when you're crazy? <laughs> <laughs> Affordable housing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh is right. The people of this town are not going to rally around affordable housing. Why not? It's a synonym for minorities. Which to folks around here means trouble. Kids in the street, gangs, violence, crime. Uh, in their minds, we'll be inviting the Jets and Sharks to come live here. Do you know how antiquated that reference is? That's exactly how folks here would picture it. Easy action. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves. How do we pay for all this redevelopment? Uh, even if the town had the money, I don't think it should be financing uh, you know, a business project. I, I read about something like this over to Fort Irvine. They created a, a public-private partnership for the business district. The town provides the land and connections to services, waives taxes for a decade or so for an interest in the property. Uh, there's no way Mr. House's store could handle all those people. Provide that many potential buyers, and I can promise you we will have enough sellers. We'll throw them some tax and zoning breaks, that kind of thing, just to make sure. Tariq, you think you could draw up a town plan to accommodate all those people? Of course. But I'll pay you for it. I don't expect you to work for nothing. But that's not it. The plan could not be certified. Uh, I'm not licensed. Does it matter? It would just be a campaign tool, not an official document. Uh, but wait, Jack, uh, what are we doing? Are we about to turn Liberty's Corner into something else? It's just a few new people, Kevin. Uh, the thing is, you know, most people in town 
I mean, almost everybody's facing Tom. A lot of us came up together since first grade at uh, Bedwell Elementary. Suddenly there'd be uh, all these people. So these would be new friends you just haven't met yet. You are afraid people will be wearing different things. Air Jordans and kente cloths, hijabs and turbans. Hey, I'm not that kind of I'm person. not saying you're a racist. I'm saying you're human. You, you like things that are familiar. I know the solution to that problem. What? Get familiar with new things. <laughs> Speaking of which... Hello, Stella. Coffee? Uh, not right now. Huh. Uh, my, my, the last time we were together, I thought you decided to make things easier on yourself. Have a seat, Mr. Fiedler. He's a recent guy. It's all right. Okay. All right, okay. have a seat, Mr. Fiedler. Now, I can say this quickly. I forgot. I want some eggs. I'm on it. Are you absolutely sure that you want to stay in this race? Why don't you step aside and save yourself a lot of trouble? Not to mention your own pension. That would really be a lot easier. Uh, it's kind of you to be thinking about my welfare, but I've made up my mind again. <laughs> All right then, I just wanted to make sure first, this is a summons and complaint for election malfeasance. What? what? You have 30 days to answer. If you drop out, of course, you won't have to do anything. Good afternoon, everyone. He's contesting the legitimacy of the signatures on your petition to be a candidate. Those signatures are all legit? Of course they are, but you have to hire a lawyer in order to get the complaint dismissed. Uh, no, I don't. Uh, I'll just go down there and explain to the judge. No, 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 no you better you get a lawyer. You have to hire a lawyer. Uh, Jack, you can do it. Kevin, I've been retired for years. No, you have to hire somebody to go to the county seat who knows how to handle this kind of thing. And that will cost, um, I guess, around four or five thousand. Uh, just when I'm about to lose everything I worked for, I get this. You own your house. I'm sure Tommy Sussman will give you a loan. Which I would have to pay back. Jack, how did I get into this mess? I'm afraid it's my fault. I talked you into this. I'm afraid I pressured you. Because I hoped to move my family here. This would be a very nice place for my children to grow up in. Well, it's my fault. I let you guys sit around and spin these wild ideas instead of talking sense into you. Uh, no, none of you got me into this. I did. No, you didn't. Donna did. <laughs> to Donna. Uh, I hope you uh, got something up your sleeve. Scene four. Card Fiedlers appears in a video. Hello, fellow citizens of Liberty's Corner. My name is Carl Fiedler, and I'm asking you to vote for me to be your mayor. It's true I haven't lived here as long as many of you, but I want to assure you that I love this town just as much as you do. And I want to be able to enjoy the way we live right now for as long as possible. Now, many of you know that the state wants to close our town, and you know how it is once big government decides to do something. It's going to be done, like it or not. But we have a choice. We can stand by helplessly while they take everything away from us, or we can be proactive and be compensated for the tremendous value that's been built up in this beautiful town. The public lands, the school buildings, the parks, the town square, all of these are real assets. They're worth cash to investors and developers. That's money that could go straight into your pocket and no one can take away your memories of the way Liberty's Corner used to be. My opponent is a very fine fellow and was an admirable public servant. But he has no business training or experience, and he doesn't know the value of things. If he did, would he be throwing away his entire pension for the admittedly dubious glory of being mayor of this town? <laughs> that, my fellow citizens, is a person who does not understand money. Because if we don't get what we're entitled to, what's the alternative? My opponent has a plan to build new office buildings and apartments, 
bring in people from outside to work here, people who talk differently, dress differently, think differently. Is this what we want for the future of Liberty's Corner? If you're a risk taker, go ahead, take a chance with my opponent. Or you can settle. That is, settle down with a nice pile of change. Your share of the assets in the newly capitalized, fully realized independent association of Liberty's Corner. Vote for Carl Friedler for mayor. Row one, column B. Thank you for your attention. Uh, scene five, the diner. Over medium and we burn the hash browns for you. Thanks, Stella. <laughs> Jack, what in the hell are you doing? Trying to eat breakfast while find, fending off an unanticipated attack from what appears to be a hoppy of mythological fame. I mean, doing to Kevin. I'm helping him to achieve his dream. Of dying in poverty? Of serving and saving his beloved hometown. <sighs> Our hometown. Bad enough, he's gonna have to kiss his pension bye-bye, but now he has to hire a lawyer for this BS case, and then he's decided to pay Tariq to draw up redevelopment plans. Well, good for Tariq, and good for Kevin, too. By the way, this is not white toast. No, it's 12 grain. You need the fiber. You're a secret fascist. I have no secrets. What am I supposed to do? Kevin is a grown-ass man, as they say these days. Well, if he loses his house, you damn well better take him in. For the last time, he's not going to lose his house. So, Tariq has finished them, and they're magnificent. What? He has plans for the redevelopment. No, oh, they're just onion skins over the counter survey. Uh, look, look. Uh, this is the old shoe factory. Uh, we're going to call it uh, Liberty's uh, Center. Maybe, uh, you know, Enterprise Center. Uh, never mind. Uh, see here, that, that's where the uh, building's intake is. Uh, we'll connect uh, to the main. Uh, we're going to have to draw a new main out here, and uh, uh, then build a buffer tank here, and... Well, how about the apartments? Uh, we got here, uh, those here, too. Uh, uh, there's some available lots near Portland Road, and... Uh, right, how, nice... much, how much is this cost? Oh, don't worry, we got that covered. All right, famous last words. Stella, that's where we go, and... I'm finished! Finished at last! Great God Almighty, finished! Uh, finished what? Your message about the election, and now everybody knows and everybody's all set. Look, I even already made my mail-in ballot. Oh, that's great. Um, it's filled out to Carl Feeler. What is this, Melanie? Uh, you're not voting for me? Isn't that what you wanted? Well, yes it was, but that was before. I thought that's why you were talking about all the changes you were going to make in the town. What? We all agree with you, Kevin. Nobody wants to see Liberty's Corner change. That was a brilliant strategy. Much better than just pe telling people not to vote for you. Uh, but that's just you. Uh, everybody else is voting for me, right? Oh, no. Bonnie and Pete aren't voting for you, and Martin and Sophie, and Sophie's cousin, Jerry and the Boylans, and Father Dave. And Mr. Crockett, the science teacher? Uh, Mr. Crockett? Uh, I thought The he... two Maureens, Maureen Pickett and Maureen Kenilworth, and their husbands, Gloria Shostak and her brother Carl, her married daughter Susan, although I don't know about Susan's husband. He's kind of new. Well, that's not so bad. I mean, I can't... And Chaz Whitcomb and most of the boys down at the VFW, Morton and Alice Gidney, and there's Bob and Robert, and you know those two young fellows who bought the Dorsey place and are fixing it up together? Uh, I could take them out for coffee. The uh... Liberty's Corner Ladies Softball League, the Odd Fellows, the Quilting Society, the Sons of the Desert, the Liberty Corner Improvement Association. Wow. The Garrett Kudlow, and that's just the folks I know personally. Just the ones that you know Shelly personally. Shelly Pickin knows a whole lot more, but I don't have her list. Don't you know anybody voting for me? Oh, there's old man Holler. Old man Holler? He hates me. He's voting for me? Oh, yes. He wants you to lose your pension. I can't believe this. I don't understand, Kevin. I thought you were telling everybody not to vote for you. Uh, not anymore. Don't you understand that, that guy Fiedler wants to run, ruin our town? 
He's going to change everything. I heard you were going to change everything. Everybody's talking about how you want to bring in a lot of foreigners and give them big jobs in office buildings, bust kids into schools, put a Starbucks in the firehouse, build a Jewish Muslim church on Prescott Bluff, and put in more Section 8, whatever that is. Melanie, you know I love Liberty's Corner. I always thought so. Don't you know I would never do anything to hurt the town? But if we do nothing, our town is going to cease to be, you know... That was the best part of Mr. Fiedler's speech. Everyone liked the idea of getting some money for their share of the town. At least if we vote for him, we get to take a vacation or build another shed or something. Plus, he agreed to save the band shell. The band shell. My grandfather gave the money to build that band shell. Melanie, even if uh, Fiedler's plan is legal and it works, both of which I have my doubts about, it means that there will be no Liberty's Corner, no library, no dog park, no band shell. And on the 4th of July, we'll have to go over to the Chandler Park and watch their parade. Oh, he didn't say anything about that. Who, who are all those people out there? Where? The only way to keep Liberty's Corner from disappearing is for us to put a few things in place. Uh, nothing that really changes who we are. What about all those new people? Aren't they going to wear those burkers and make us speak their language? I don't recognize a one of them. Uh, would it be so terrible to have people who do some things different? Uh, we can survive a few scarves and a couple of beards. Abner Gusset has had a beard since before most of us were born and nobody locked him up for it. Definitely out-of-towners. Uh, yes, uh, they'll be new people, but they're just people. They just want to live their lives like we do. And they're going to come and, uh, you know, here and help Liberty's Corner to keep going. Uh, it's still going to be a nice town where people know each other and look out for each other. Uh, that's what I want to keep and what Carl Fiedler wants to let go. Let it blow away into the wind and, you know, like the gold in the Sierra of Treasures Padre. Uh, his way of figuring things are only worth the money you can get for them. Uh, he would be happy to take our town and burst it apart uh, and sell each piece off like it was a garage sale. And you know what happens when you break a town into small pieces like that? What? The heart and soul spills out and you can't put them back again. That does not look good. I don't get it. You want to change everything so Liberty's Corner can stay the same? Melanie Longworth Prescott, you are a damn genius. That's exactly what I want to do. Are they carrying torches? That's going to take some explaining. Uh, you may have to explain it to that crowd out there. It's not a crowd, that's a mob. <gasps> that's for you, Dowelhead. Go back to where you came from. Scene six. Kevin in his home, exercising with a small headway. This is a daily routine so they should not interfere with the, his thought or speech. The usual picture of Donna is nearby. Uh, well, Donna, uh, I think I put my foot in, it, foot in it. I suggested trying some new things and now we got street violence. Well, a brick through a window. Uh, that better be it for the demonstrations. Hopefully folks haven't got time to riot when there's wood to be stacked before the snow comes. People have the wrong idea about Tariq because they don't know him. I guess it's always the people you don't actually know you have all the wrong ideas about. I don't want to see him go. He's become very important to me, Donna. There's talk that somebody should make a speech, but I don't know what good that will do. I don't think folks listen to speeches. They do listen to stories. If I had a good story to tell, maybe I could help. Well, anyway, Donna, Somewhere in this house, there's a piece of paper that could sort everything out. Somewhere there's an answer. Send me a message, please, Donna. And include the receipt so Stella can finish the taxes and I could go uh, get a refund to live on until I sink into abject poverty before an American most destitute mayor. Sure, I could hear you laughing, but I have to live with it. Seven, the diamond. I'm really sorry about this. Uh, why? Did you throw the brick? 
I could have sworn you were standing here. You know it's because of me. Are you seriously apologizing for being who you are? Or apologizing for the idiot who threw the brick? Because I don't think you have the right to do either. I should help pay for this. Oh, now you're being ridiculous. Well, what, do you think you're, you're, you're special? You think this is unique? My grandfather came to the state in 1922. He had a hot dog counter in Winslow, right where the cars slow down for the one-lane bridge. He would like to have had a diner, but all he could afford was a hot dog counter, and he, that he built on a farm wagon that cost five bucks. He was known as Nick the Greek. His name was Spiro, but he was known as Nick the Greek because it was 1922 and people are idiots. Uh, uh, what are the soups today? The lemon chicken and the lentils. So, one day, my father goes to the stable where he's paid the farmer to keep his hot dog counter, and the door is open, and he goes in, and the thing is in splinters. The warmers are completely destroyed, the utensils, the paper goods, scattered. But uh, uh, what, what, why? Burnt into the wood where the letters KKK. KKK? What did the clan have against Greeks? I don't know. They don't need copper tone? <laughs> I mean, who knows with these people? Uh, they're not about making sense. They're about making fear. They didn't reckon on my grandfather. He had a new cart ready to go in two days. And then he slept next to the cart with a shotgun. Eventually, they lost interest. Maybe they found an easier target. Must have been the great man. He was a foul-tempered, loud-mouthed jerk with halitosis. <laughs> but he took care of his family. He taught me the restaurant business, in between cursing at me for not filling the water glasses fast enough. <laughs> I see. The point is, don't feel so proud of your brick. This has been going on a while, and will continue as long as there are people who need to be feared because they can't earn respect. <laughs> Meanwhile, they choke down their mayonnaise on Wonder Bread when they could have had some hummus or a skewer of kebabs. <laughs> Which reminds me, you better get those cubes out of the marinade. Right. <laughs> Seriously, on lunch. Tariq, how are you doing with that loan? Not well. My credit is, well, it's not well established. I'll lend you the money. You'll pay me back out of the receipts. The place is yours. On one condition, you can't change the name or the decorations. <laughs> Are you kidding? This is what I want more than anything in the world. Eh? <laughs> I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I told Teresa's lamb stew was very good. Uh, it, it must have been. What, what's that? Uh, please, uh, just this box. Oh, you say that until you bring the next one. Uh, I'll pay for your window. Why? You think I can't afford insurance? Uh, uh, does it cover uh, hate crime? It covers vandalism, which is all this is. You sure? Yeah, just dump the box here. I thought I'd been through everything, but you told me to keep looking, and I and I found this at the bottom of our closet. Did, did you even did you even look at these papers? What is this? Has the Smithsonian been in touch with you about the retrospective of your past remittances? <laughs> I don't know what I was supposed to be looking for. It's a wonder you can find your way here every day unassisted. I love you too. Well, come on and try and help. Uh, you can certainly tell the difference between financial information and a postcard from Aunt Sally's visit to Cozumel. Look, uh, uh, I could save a lot of money on a, uh, on a flip phone. Uh, it's wireless, too. Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. This is something. 
What is it? <laughs> this is fantastic. Does it mean you can do my taxes? Oh, this is wonderful. A word hardly ever associated with taxes. Oh, you should read it. Uh, well, I even understand it. It's not financial. What? It's oh. Donna's address to the League of Women Voters. What? Yeah, the League asked her to come and talk about the Week in the, co the Country Fund. Uh, that's funny. I was just talking about... Here, here, read it. I hate to admit it, but the Week in the Country Fund is built on a lie. What? Keep reading. It's built on a lie. We tell ourselves and everyone else that we bring these kids from the proud cities to our simple, isolated town because it will be good for them. And I'm not saying it's not good for them. They get fresh air and exercise. They get to swim in a lake instead of a pool, to take a bike ride without caring where you're going, and to feel that's, that it's like the path through a cool, dark forest. But that's not the reason we do it year after year. We're not that unselfish. We do it for us. We bring those kids here because of what we get out of it. Seating! You want me to read? Kevin appears in a video standing at a podium. A banner appears at the top of the image. Election Eve debate. Liberty's corner mayor's race. Kevin is holding Donna's uh, transcript in his somewhat trembling hand. His voice continues from the previous line. Mm -hmm because of what we get out of it. They bring us to their own pers perspectives, their own experiences, people, places, and things that we could only know by knowing them, and that enriches us. The only reason we see the world in three dimensions is because we see it from two different points of view. It's called the parallax effect. The brain puts those different points of view together, and only in that way do we see how things really are. You see, you don't know. Hold on a second. Put yeah, somebody's supposed to say that. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Voice off camera. Two minutes. Okay. All right. Uh, you have two minutes left in your closing statement, Chief. You see, you don't know what you don't know. For example, my husband. That's me. My husband had a terrible tragedy his first week as fire chief. A warehouse at the edge of town was burning with black, black smoke. He sent three firefighters in and warned them not to open anything because of the danger of backdraft. We all saw the movie, right? But when this deputy said he was worried about the black smoke pouring out, my husband didn't hear him. The danger wasn't black backdraft, it was flashover. Those three firefighters didn't have a chance. The room exploded and they were practically vaporized. One of them was on his first week. Flashover is uncommon here. He wouldn't have been expected to have known that, but that didn't help when he had to tell the widows there would be no bodies for the funerals. So what we don't know can kill us, but sometimes it can enrich us. I don't know about you, but I hate grackles. They're big, ugly birds. They're thieves, and their songs sound like rusty hinge or worse. The one thing you could say for them is that they're perfectly named. Grackle. One year, a boy was visiting us. Let's call him Alfred. And he found me in the backyard waving a broom, screaming like a banshee at those birds uh, away from our lawn. Alfred had never seen a grackle, and he didn't know what we called him. I should mention that Alfred was quite fond of superheroes in comic books. So when he found me carrying on like a thing possessed, he asked, why are you chasing away the sable sentinels? You see, to Alfred, they weren't really mean grackles. They were beautiful sable sentinels. If we don't take the trouble to bring new people into our lives, how will we ever have the vision to see both the dangerous and the beautiful that's right in front of us? 
Thank you very much for listening to Donna's message. Please vote for me for mayor. C9, the diner. Late morning, Jack, Kevin, Tariq, and Melanie are slumped around the remains of breakfast. Stella's on the phone. Is that so? Is that so? They what? Okay, I'll, I'll tell them. All right, take care. Bye. Sorry, Kevin. What? The clerk has verified the count, and the council has certified it. You're going to be mayor. Oh. Yay. Oh. And there's another thing. Oh. I'm, I'm sorry about this. Why? Did you do it? Uh, Tariq told me it was him. <laughs> Congratulations, Chief. You won a well-fought fight. I think those tears in that last speech especially clinched it. Do you have to practice? Uh, they're uh, called feelings. You should try them sometimes. Well, anyway, my deepest sympathies. Now that you'll have all those promises to keep, <laughs> while you try and live on 22500 a year, I was going to offer you a job to help you out. Uh, what, pray tell, dissuaded you from that charitable offer? I'm moving. I've put the house up for sale, and I've got a new place picked out. Where are you moving to, Mr. Fiedler? Oh, another small town, I can assure you. To see if they fall for his malarkey. Oh, Mr. Fiedler, what about the banjo? Let me take care of that right now. Oh, is that what you do, Mr. Fiedler? You're a flipper? I realize unrealized value, yes. I think the town of Liberty's Corner did that yesterday, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are. Is that going to be enough? Wow, we're going to be able to cover the band shell and gold leaf. <laughs> if there's any money left over, I'm sure the band society will make good use of it. Why? Well, chalk it up to a fond memory of a charming place. Seriously, Chief, or should I say Mr. Mayor, that's quite a laundry list of things you've got to accomplish. Zoning waivers, environmental impact reports, capitalization. He's lucky to have you on his team. I could see you learned a lot in Aleppo. I've learned even more in America. Well, I hope you can pull it off. I'd rather have tried than not have tried. <laughs> well, it's not profound, but as philosophies goes, it suits you well. Goodbye, everyone. Do you think it would be all right if the band society shared the money with the gardening club? <laughs> I could have used that job you mentioned, that's for sure. That's the thing, Kevin. What? I was just about to tell you when Fiedler came in. The council decided to change the pay grade for the mayor's job. Can they do that? What do they raise it to? Tell me it's at least 50000 so we can pay his taxes. No, nope. it's nothing. What? Nothing? What? Yeah, they decided to make it a volunteer position. <coughs> <coughs> Who decided what? Don't you see? It, it solves your problem. Oh, yes, I can see. Uh, I will no longer bear the terrible curse of money. You on your pension. What about my pension? If you do not receive a salary from the town, then you may continue to receive your full pension. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good, right? Yes, it's yes. good. You can go ahead and be the mayor. Provided there's still a town left. <laughs> I am going to move here. With my whole family. Really? Oh, I can't wait to meet them. Are you sure? I have recently made Certain arrangements. No need for secrecy. Tariq is buying the place from me. What? What, 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 you, what are you happen? going to do? Yeah, I, I want to retire, and so we came to an agreement. Oh, that's fantastic. What are you going to call the place, Tariq? The Miss Liberty Diner. What else? <laughs> that's what I came here for. To enjoy the <laughs> blessings of liberty. Yes, and to be a capitalist <laughs> oppressor. <laughs> I'm kidding. Things sure are changing here. What about your children when they go to school? I am sure the other children will be able to adjust. Do you really want to live here? 
My father used to say, choose the neighbor before the house. Well, let's hope we can turn everyone here into good neighbors. <laughs> I'll settle for a peaceful standoff. <laughs> I was taught to aim high. To Donna. To Donna! To Donna! <laughs> Epilogue. The graveyard. So, so Tariq insists he has taken me to Austin to teach me about proper chilling before my term starts. Uh, he said something about how only by traveling can you find out if the things you've read about are really true. How do you really know for sure that's the Cathedral of Notre Dame or the Hall of Fame in Cooperstown actually exist? They could be a giant hoax. So you have to go and see it for yourself. I think that's how he explained it to me. It'll be a change, anyway. Uh, you know, Donna, I was the last guy in the world to be in favor of change. And now I'm in charge of it. Uh, I hope I'm up to the job. Uh, and I think I need to begin with you and me. Donna, you'll always be part of my life, and I'm always going to ask your advice. But I think I need to accept the fact that I can't ever be really sure if it's you talking mm -hmm. to me or whether I'm talking to myself into what I was going to do anyway. So I think I have to let go a little. Let you go and be my own person. Take responsibility for my own decisions and credit for my own ideas. I know you'll understand and you'll be proud of me. Love you, honey. Good night. It's not getting any bigger. No way. Don't you start with me.